Today I have a base reconstruction process where I'm going to be going over with y'all, giving you an unbox review, show you everything beneficial on it, and let's find out if this is beneficial for you and why you need one. Stay tuned. Let's go ahead and dig in. So this is the NVX XBB R2 X series base reconstruction processor. Really excited to see how this does today. Get it installed, test it out, and let's find out all the features it has and see if it's beneficial. So for that, just want to say thank you all for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. A lot of daily cardio content. A little different today. I've never used this kind of product, but glad to test it out today. And check out the links in the description if you want to know all the information about this product because I don't know everything, and I'm not going to read the manual on everything. Just want to give you the key points. So definitely recommend checking out descriptions for everything you want to know. So left side of this has the RCAs on the output side, as well as the base knob and the input for your 12-volt ground, your remote in and out. And on the other side, it has the RCAs in, as well as you have your line in if you're coming from a factory stereo system. So whether you have a aftermarket or a factory you're able to use utilize that and also this reconstruction you have different options you'll be able to see as I go throughout the video testing out each one with load select your turn on mode ground isolation really important factor here as well as if you want to adjust your wide and sweep and lastly your gain setting with a clip meter here so really gonna be cool to try out all of these things and show you them dig into the manual real quick this is made specifically for an aftermarket stereo system or factory head unit if you want to be able to optimize for additional equipment, say you're installing a subwoofer and an amplifier, and it gives you parametric controls, a one-stop solution point, utilizing this device to help you boost your electrical system and your RCAs and output. So it has an active two-channel base restoration processor designed just for aftermarket systems. So if you're installing a subwoofer amplifier, as I mentioned, with a up to 30 volt speaker level input, and it also has a output of up to nine and a half volts. So this will actually help boost your RCA level when you go into the amplifier when you install it with adjustable parametric base controls, as well as with a clip indicator light that you can utilize for identifying distortion with a frequent response from 10 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. So that's some of the summary review. Hit pause if you didn't want to uh, listen to me spiel as well as looking at all the specs. And of course, check out the link in the description. So now let's go ahead and get this thing installed. Okay, so I got this right out here behind my vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and get everything installed. Okay, so I got the input from my stereo head unit. I'm not using a factory head unit, so I'm not using the input from the positive, negative, left and right channels of that. Actually coming from my RCAs of my base output from my stereo head unit. And the output will be going to the amplifier. The remote is going directly to a base knob provided. This is actually where I can control the uh, output voltage and other options. Gonna have my remote out, which is gonna be going to my amplifier. So whenever this turns on, it will actually trigger to turn on the amplifier. The remote end comes from my stereo receiver. So this is my blue turn on wire. I have it grounded to my rear battery and I have it connected to my power supply of my rear battery. And we'll go ahead and do a first turn on and mess with some of these settings. Figured I'd show this also so you could kind of visually see through their typical wiring option in the manual here. Where you have your amplifier coming out from your RCAs with your subwoofer. Then you have your battery hookup, your chassis hookup, or of course rear battery, and your remote turn on there. And then from the stereo or aftermarket or your actual signal coming from your RCAs going in here is your two options. So visually it's easier to see on paper than physically, but I got to show you both. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my first turn on. Everything's hooked up and confirmed. The voltage and everything is good. So I'm gonna go turn the vehicle on now. Okay, so we got, we got power. Okay, so we got power. So now let me go ahead and mess with some of these settings and then I can end this video. So I appreciate y'all watching. Hope this has helped you. This is completely new do topic of device for me. I've never used any kind of base reconstruction process or period, but it's a really cool tool, especially for somebody having a factory stereo and wants to have some base or somebody that wants to be able to boost their RCAs for higher quality. Also, if you have any kind of distortion issues or you have like a whining alternator sound or a ground issue, this helps prevent that too. So, and then there's other features, of course, I mentioned earlier. So. Let's go ahead and mess with these settings. All right, so I'm gonna be looking at the load select first. I actually have my manual here because I have no clue how some of these features work and I wanna make sure it's accurate to the point. So everything's already been installed. There isn't any issues there. So we're gonna go ahead and look at the load select option first. So load select option gives you three different options. The default is 20K ohm, 60 ohm, and 20 ohm. The main reason for that is different common load amounts that you're gonna be working with. Standard is going to be default based off of what this manual works on. So I'm not even going to actually adjust my load select here. And then for my turn on mode, you have either a remote, you have something that's going to be activated from when the DC power is turned on. So for example, if my stereo turns on, this will turn on or just the AUD selection point, which is whenever you have a CD in the stereo or Bluetooth streaming, etc. So different options there. I actually just want to use the remote wire. Keep it simple so honestly the default for the first two i'm keeping right where they are now for the ground isolation so this is probably where people might have problems and they want to be able to try to help prevent like a grounding issue so if you hear any kind of alternator whine or you have grounding noise creeping into your audio path this is a power grounded signal ground that's not tied together but with this switch it would be able to help power off some of those grounding issues and I'm actually reading right here, this is what it says. Power supply has the same as the ground. For the ground option, ISO has the power supply ground is separated from the audio. And then the 200 ohm says, features a 200 ohm load between the power ground and audio ground. So if you try this, this actually might pr problem solve and resolve that grounding whining issue. So I'm not gonna mess with this one because I don't have any grounding issues. So I'm gonna keep it at the default as well. This video is more about talking about each of these features and the benefits and why you would want one of these. This isn't me testing out for my system. I want to be able to see the features and that's why I make this video to see how important these features are. Not for my own system, but for anybody watching and different options for what you want to try. All right, so the next one here is we have the parametric base control. So this is where you use your sweep and your wide and you're also able to adjust your gain. So you have multiple things you can work with here at the same time. And of course you can adjust it with this knob here. So this is not just a bass knob. This is also a volume knob for adjusting your voltage. So a voltage volume knob, not actually something you would use on your whole system, but to be able to control where you want your voltage to be adjusted. And looking at the manual here, it shows that it goes anywhere from minus 28 dB to a one dB on your gain. And then for your actual adjustment point here, this can go anywhere from a 2.5 volt to a 30 volt uh, high output level. So this is where you actually can adjust your RCA output to be able to give you wherever you prefer your base output uh, voltage level for your output RCAs to be at. And that would be a nice benefit for if you want to be able to have your gain turned lower and to realign with where your pre-out voltage is that you want to run. So personally, I use a stock, or not stock, the stereo aftermarket unit, which is running at a two and a half volt. So I'm only able to run two and a half volts, but using this device, I'm able to boost that to a maximum voltage of 2.5 up to 30 volts for your high output level input. And then of course your output voltage would be up to nine and a half volts so that's just depending on what option you want to do with and you can actually use the clipping meter here to identify that clipping point so if i had this hooked up to my amplifier and i use a frequency tone and i wanted to adjust my gain i could go in here and turn this up after getting to my to my maximum clipping level on my stereo unit 
or my factory head unit, or say I wanted to tune it at volume 30 out of 35, then I can actually use this to tune it. And the moment that you would see a clip point, it would actually help you identify where you want to set your gain on this. And this is a good feature here also for the clipping point. So you're actually able to identify when you get dirty power at that frequency that you tested at. So that's a pretty cool feature. And it says here, LED lights up when the output signal gets distorted. So this is a cool tool to be able to use that for. But of course, you have to have this installed in order for you to be able to use that tool. So back to the wide discussion where you can adjust your frequency anywhere from 70 to 150 hertz. And then, of course, your bandwidth from 45 to 180 for your max width. So that's where you can set your sweep and your wide. So for your sweep, you can pick a center, uh, frequency where you have your base restoration to be enhanced. And that's where this chart is showing you where you have your center frequency, then you have your FS for F level two and your F level two or in one, sorry. And that's where you have your two frequency set points. So that's where you have your amplified DB level. So that's where you're gonna get more bass. So this is gonna be very beneficial for somebody trying to hook up a factory stereo unit to this device to help boost your bass response because you're not getting the amount of bass that you're actually supposed to have so this one i probably wouldn't use if i have an aftermarket since i can use the settings on that but for a factory head unit this is a nice plus here and it's really cool to see so i don't know much about this i hope i answered some questions also check out the links in the description if you want to know more about this device the base reconstruction processor xbbr2 from mvx i'm glad i'd be able to do a video today shout out to mvx for sending me the product Get to try out some more fun projects with this thing and uh, stay tuned for more videos and subscribe i hope you all enjoyed that you got to check out the links for all questions to be answered because this is the first time for me and if y'all have anything i said wrong feel free to let me know in the comments i'm learning as i go too and i'm glad to be able to see where this will take me with uh trying out different setups in the future so pretty cool device and I'm not going to be testing the clip leader today, but if you were to test it, I would be able to see this flicker on. I've seen some other videos with that. You should check out as well. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching and subscribe. And